Hello, I'm Jay Buckley, Technical Training Manager at Honeywell Consumer Products Group. Welcome to Module 2 of the Autolite Challenge Professional Technician Program. This module focuses on conventional ignition systems. Conventional ignition systems have been around since the beginning of the automobile. Early one-cylinder engines used a magneto to fire the ignition. A magneto is an electrical generator that's tuned to create a high voltage pulse rather than a continuous current. In this simple system, magnets spin past a coil with a set of breaker points to interrupt the magnetic field, creating voltage. At low engine speeds, magneto systems had low output. In a world of hand crank cars, this was a real problem. Still, magneto systems are quite reliable. You'll find magnetos to this day in small lawnmowers, snowmobiles, and other two-stroke applications. As soon as vehicle manufacturers moved to multiple cylinder engines, engineers needed to design an ignition system that could fire cylinders in a more controlled manner. They wanted a compact device that would distribute spark to individual cylinders. This led to the invention of the ignition distributor. When automakers began using batteries to facilitate electric starting, the ignition system quickly evolved. Engineer Charles Kettering invented the first battery-powered distributor ignition system in 1910. He also perfected the electric starter. The combination of these inventions eliminated the need for hand cranking. Kettering's revolutionary battery-powered distributor ignition system consisted of a coil, a switch, a set of breaker points in this case, a capacitor, and a distributor to accurately distribute the spark to individual cylinders in the required sequence. All modern conventional ignition systems still use the same components in some form. The points close and open while the engine is turning. When the points close, a magnetic field is created around the coil windings. When the points open, the magnetic field quickly collapses, producing high voltage in the secondary windings. During the collapse of the magnetic field, there is a voltage spike across the breaker points of 300 to 600 volts. The capacitor absorbs a low voltage primary spike the instant the points start to open, which minimizes the arcing across the points. There is also a ballast resistor from the battery to the coil to step down voltage from the battery to the breaker points. The breaker points would wear quickly if they carried the full voltage of the battery. The ballast resistor is bypassed during cranking so that the coil receives battery voltage which provides a good spark during lower crank voltages. Here's how it works. The heart of a four-stroke engine ignition system is the distributor. Inside the distributor is a cam that's driven mechanically by the engine. There's also a condenser, a rotor, and a distributor cap with spark plug towers. On the outside of the distributor cap, there's a coil, spark plug wires, and spark plugs. This system is powered by the vehicle's battery, and the battery is kept charged by the alternator. The coil consists of two transformer windings around a common core. These are referred to as primary and secondary windings. Think of the ignition coil as a step-up transformer. This means it has the ability to take the battery voltage and step it up to the voltage needed to spark at the plugs. 5 to 30,000 volts are typically needed to fire a spark plug under compression. One end of each of the windings is connected together and to the vehicle battery voltage source. The battery voltage is limited to 6 to 8 volts by the ballast resistor. Some vehicles replace the ballast resistor with a resistance wire. Why do we limit the battery voltage? If we use the full battery voltage across the points, the breaker points would experience rapid wear. The other end of the primary is connected to the breaker points or an electronic switch. The end of the secondary winding is connected through the coil tower and coil wire to the distributor cap and rotor and onto the spark plugs. The ignition firing begins with the points closed to create a magnetic field around the coil windings. The step down battery voltage flows through the coil primary, through the closed breaker points and back to the battery. The steady current creates a magnetic field within the coil. This forms the energy that will be used to create the spark. When you crank an engine, the cam inside the distributor starts to turn, driven mechanically by the engine. The breaker points riding on the cam will open and close. The spark is created at the opening point and is timed to the compression cycle of the engine. When the points open, the current flow to the primary is stopped. 
This causes the immediate collapse of the magnetic field in the coil, creating a very high voltage in the coil secondary windings. The capacitor, which is also known as a condenser, is connected in parallel across the points to protect the points. The energy storage property of a capacitor allows it to absorb current, limiting the arcing at the points the very instant the cam opens them. An ignition primary circuit is made up of the battery, the coil primary winding, the switching system, points are an electronic switch, and wiring back to the battery. An ignition secondary circuit is made up of the secondary windings in a coil, a high voltage wire between the coil and distributor cap, the rotor, the distributor cap, the spark plug wires, and the spark plugs. A spinning rotor directs or distributes the high voltage through the distributor cap terminals to each spark plug wire in firing order. The voltage then moves through the ignition wires and jumps the spark plug gap, igniting the fuel and air inside the engine. In this system, the plate on which the breaker points are mounted can rotate to change the timing of the opening of the breaker points with respect to the crankshaft position. This allows the ignition timing to change as the engine RPM changes, optimizing the ignition. The timing adjuster or advance mechanism may be vacuum operated, mechanically operated, or even work with spinning weights and centrifugal force. A breaker point switch system was in use until the early 1970s. At that time, electronic ignitions became popular. With increasing emissions and fuel economy requirements, the old breaker point system's need for constant maintenance became a problem. Remember, these old vehicles needed tune-ups every 12,000 miles. This led to the breaker points being replaced with an electronic switch. One common electronic switch was triggered by Hall Effect. This used a toothed wheel passing a magnet. The other style was switched by an optical sensor. This used a light beam and a wheel with windows cut into it. This signal was fed into a transistorized circuit that was used to trigger the switching device for the primary current. These transistorized units are often referred to as igniters. The rest of the system remains pretty much the same with a coil, spark plugs, and plug wires. Troubleshooting a conventional ignition system usually begins because the vehicle is misfiring or will not start. Always begin by checking all connectors and wiring for corrosion and poor connections. To properly diagnose the system, you need to think of it in its primary and secondary states. To begin, make sure the ignition is turned off and that the key is not in the ignition. Using a spark tester designed for secondary voltages, remove one spark plug wire and install it on the spark tester. The other side of the tester will need to be connected to ground. Step away from the vehicle while keeping the spark tester in sight. Then have an assistant crank the engine. If you see that there is no spark, you'll need to work backward to find the problem. With the ignition off and the key removed from the ignition, remove the coil wire, insert the spark tester into the coil wire, and ground the tester to a good engine ground. Again, have an assistant crank the engine while you watch for a spark from a safe distance. If you have a spark, the problem is in the secondary high voltage distribution and is most likely a bad distributor cap or rotor. If there's no spark from the coil, the problem is in the coil, coil wire, or primary circuit that switches the coil on and off. For primary diagnosis, begin by checking for six to eight volts at the battery positive terminal of the ignition coil with the vehicle key on and the breaker points closed. If the breaker points are open, then voltage should be the same as battery voltage. Is the voltage present? If voltage is less than six volts, there's a problem with the supplied voltage, either in the ignition switch or wiring. If the breaker points are closed and the voltage is greater than eight volts, the ballast resistor or resistance wire may be bad or may have been bypassed during previous attempts to repair. Inspect the breaker points for wear, pitting, and proper adjustment. If the vehicle has an electronic ignition, you can check the distributor pickup coil using an ohm meter, an instrument that measures electrical resistance. All manufacturers publish a resistance value for the coil of the pickup. To test the switching action of the pickup, hook up an oscilloscope and watch the waveform. If the waveform is flat, no switching is taking place. If you don't have an oscilloscope, hook up a non-powered test lamp between the coil negative terminal and battery positive terminal. Then crank the engine so you can see if the points or ignition module is switching. 
If the light flickers while cranking the engine, the points or switching device are working. If the light does not flicker, the points, ignition module, or wiring is suspect. This is what a good primary waveform looks like at idle speed on our oscilloscope. More expensive engine diagnostic type scopes can even check the secondary side for proper pattern and even short out cylinders to find weak or underperforming cylinders. Check the ignition coil by measuring the resistance between the coil battery side and the high tension tower. Resistance should register between 7700 and 1500 ohms. Next, check the primary circuit resistance by measuring between the coil battery positive terminal and the coil negative terminal. Typical values would be 0.08 to 1.6 ohms. These are typical specifications. Check the OE service manual for exact specifications for the vehicle that you are working on. If resistance is out of spec, replace the coil. If the primary system checks out, you need to move on to the secondary system. Begin secondary diagnosis by inspecting the distributor rotor. If the tip is burned or the spring-loaded button on top is corroded, replace the rotor. Inspect the distributor cap terminals for arcing or erosion. You may also find carbon tracking inside the distributor cap that can cause misfires and no-start conditions. Next, we need to check the spark plug wires themselves. You can check them with an ohmmeter. The general rule of thumb is 7,000 ohms per foot of wire. Anything over 15,000 ohms per foot is unacceptable. What you're really looking for is consistency between the wires. If most of your wires are 5,000 ohms per foot and one checks out at 15,000 ohms per foot, a new set of wires is in order. Autolite Professional Series wires feature OE fit, form, and function and replace an OE wire set perfectly. You should carefully inspect wires for cracks, weathering, and corrosion at the ends. Always replace them as a set. Next, it's time to inspect the spark plugs themselves. While it would be unlikely for all spark plugs to be worn out at once and cause a no-start condition, spark plugs can wear excessively and cause misfiring. Always replace spark plugs as a set. If the spark plugs are wet or fouled due to the ignition system failure, they should be replaced, especially if they are near the end of their service life. It's also very important to verify the mechanical condition of the engine if you find that the spark plugs are the primary cause of poor ignition performance. An engine with leaking valves, low compression, and or sticking oil control rings can all foul spark plugs. These conditions must be corrected or you'll still have ignition issues. These are generalized troubleshooting instructions. Always refer to manufacturer-specific diagnostic information in the service manual for the vehicle you're working on. Remember, the following systems must be working for a vehicle to start. Proper voltage to the battery positive terminal of the coil, a working switching device to trigger the field collapse inside the coil, clean corrosion-free connections both in the small wiring, the spark plug and coil wires, and inside the distributor cap. Be sure to check the spark plug and coil wire ends for corrosion. Check all small connectors for bent or broken ends and corroded terminals. The distributor must be mechanically sound. The gear drive on some distributors is pinned in place. The pin can shear and the distributor will not turn. Most conventional ignition systems are equipped with copper core spark plugs as original equipment. Replacing worn out copper core plugs with Autolite XP Extreme Performance spark plugs would be considered an upgrade. With an iridium enhanced 0.6 millimeter fine wire design and proprietary platinum side wire technology, Autolite XP Extreme Performance spark plugs can improve performance, fuel efficiency, and durability. Congratulations! You've completed the second training module of the Autolite Challenge Professional Technician Program. Thank you for your time.